Hi, everybody. I'm just passing along some uh, information that was passed along to me on Hurricane Dorian. But I want to first start with this. Do you remember this Weather Channel meteorologist? Coastal, and we're in one of these bands. This is about as nasty as it's been. We had some bands like this last. Okay. Do you remember this video that was captured? Yeah, another Weather Channel guy. Hey, I'm wearing sneakers, aren't I cool? Okay. Ready? Aim. Fire things other than storms like here in this example and this is actually something you'll see pretty often in the early mornings during spring summer and fall you ever check uh, the app to check the radar and there's all this weird you know blue stuff all over the radar that's all rain down towards the south but what is this this is ground clutter let me explain what that means it's basically you're seeing bugs maybe a few birds and some bats also but there's a reason why when birds bats bugs Weather Channel. This was sent by Eric Cizal. Dorian Max wind gust 60 miles per hour per Weather Channel. Category 5. Hurricane, uh, uh, Hurricane Dorian 175 miles per hour. And here they're showing 45 miles per hour. 51. Gust 60 miles per hour. You know, liars have to do an awful lot of work to maintain their lies. And they expose themselves regularly, like the Weather Channel here, Hurricane Dorian, 45 miles per hour. Now, someone would say, that's the outer band winds. Okay. Well, I don't know what to, I don't know what, what to say. Yeah, the Hurricane Dorian. All right, let's see, where is it? So Freeport is right here. And Freeport really should be getting a tremendous amount of wind and rain. Here is Freeport and that's Freeport right in here. Someone sent this to me. It's a live cam, webcam. I guess a surveillance camera. Um, Freeport. It's, well, this changed, huh? Interesting. Let me see. Freeport. live. It looks like Freeport has been evacuated, that's for sure. But minimal wind. Yes, when you see um, an awful lot of data that, well, shows that mainstream media is not giving us the truth. It's very, the truth is really important. <laughs> And exposing it is quite a trip. So I want to play just a few minutes of In Truth by Grace's video that she posted yesterday, Hurricane Dorian Discrepancies. Thank you, In Truth by Grace, by you know, posting this. Very important. Folks. These are things that are run by the federal government. So the federal government getting federal government data. I'm not, I'm not making this stuff up. These airports like Marsh Harbor International Airport. It's an international airport. They have FAA standards for gathering this sort of information, daily information on wind speeds. Okay, we have wind speeds and wind gusts. And I want you to look from 1 o'clock in the morning yesterday morning until 9 o'clock at night 
tonight, well, no, it's midnight, but until 9 o'clock tonight, look at the highest wind speed, you guys. The highest wind speed you're going to see here is 21 miles an hour with gusts of only 36 miles an hour. So let's just, let's just double check this. Let's cross-reference here to what I'm showing you. Here is the Marsh Harbor Airport. Today at 2 o'clock, you had a hurricane that the National Hurricane Center is saying was 185 miles an hour at 2 o'clock. And at 11 o'clock, it was only what? Let's see how far away this. At 2 o'clock, well, the Marsh Harbor Airport is only 17 miles away from where the hurricane was at 11 in the morning. And it is only 12 miles away from where it was at 5 o'clock. And let's see, 30 miles away from where it was at 8 o'clock. So all day long, both of these airports should be reporting wind speeds of 180 miles an hour from, from 74 to 180 miles an hour. But let's look. At 11 o'clock, it was 21 miles an hour. At 2 o'clock, it was 21 miles an hour. At 5 o'clock, it was 15 miles an hour. At 8 o'clock, it was 16 miles an hour. That is for an international airport that has wind speed instruments that are accounted for on the standard for the Federal Aviation Administration. All right? I will link below to everything, so please watch in full In Truth by Grace's video and circulate it. I did get a comment from a subscriber um, who has here. My mom has relatives in Freeport. I will update. And the update that came about now, I haven't refreshed the page, so it's about two hours ago. I just spoke to my mom, and here is the only update that she has gotten since communication has been cut off. Her husband's son's wife left the Bahamas and is in Georgia visiting right now, but her daughter is still in Marsh Harbor. She went to a shelter. Airport supposedly under five feet of water and the storm surge was supposed to get up to 20 feet. She has a small laundromat business. That's her only source of income, and that will probably be destroyed. Very hard starting over when you're 72, no home, no income, no business. Still waiting to hear from other two relatives in Freeport. They're in their 60s. Um, okay. I have, it's amazing, when you post videos on events that mainstream media is reporting on 24-7, the event gets an awful lot of attention, you get inundated with people leaving comments that, well, kind of like this, uh, hmm, yeah, well, I checked this, Daniel's. Uh, channel and it appears to be a real human being who is really screwed up. Unfortunately we have a lot of people like this. I don't care about the bots. It's the real human beings that put out such well I look there's something wrong with them. So um, all right, a lot of destruction, but it's not, not a hurricane category five. I think now it's a four and it's important that the truth comes out. And it's important for all of those who are letting mainstream media, meteorologists, reporters, their quote unquote leader think for them that they begin to think for themselves, which requires doing research and not just, you know, attacking people who are posting evidence that it's not a category five. You would hope that people would see the evidence and say, okay, we're being lied to, what's going on? And then, they would do
do the research to find, wow, whether is being used as a weapon, then they would understand that, ah, we're at war. And they would put all of the destruction together, like what we have been seeing in the United States. These massive, severe weather events that have been destroying a whole lot of farms, infrastructure, flooding out people's homes, floods, four feet, five feet, six feet in people's homes, tornadoes that, well, don't really appear as tornadoes used to, so microbursts. You would hope that people would do the research on the technology that man is using to modify, manipulate, steer weather fronts and create weather so then they would understand okay we're all at war and then we would unite ha ah. but no no and you know the massive flooding that has been taking place has been extraordinary so what we get is a whole lot of people calling me just a fucking nut job because of the destruction they're seeing coming out of the uh, Bahamas. And well, that destruction, it's massive, therefore it's a category five hurricane. Well, we've seen the same kind of destruction happening virtually every single day, all over, all over our country. Were they category five hurricanes? No. And it's been bad. And this has been going on for months, months, with almost no attention given to it. You know, you look at the pictures and you, uh, yeah. Then look at the pictures coming out of the Bahamas. Same kind of destruction brought about by weather weapons. I also want to um, once again, tell all of you that Mike Morales, if you don't know about his channel, please subscribe. He is putting up you know, videos every single day and he goes through so many different uh, weather sites bringing to us more and more information that weather is being used as a weapon. He, in this last video, shows that he is bringing to us more sources showing us the wind speeds are not what mainstream media is reporting. You would like to think that we could all band together. You would like to think, you know, that people would finally wake up after seeing so much massive destruction over and over and over again. That's the only way. If there is a possibility of stopping these wars, weather wars, it can only come from all of us uniting. So when we're all on different pages, when I get so many comments from Trump supporters who are telling me that he's speaking in code 
and he's helping all of us. When I get so many comments from people who are saying, join QAnon, and then of course the comments, you know, it, it, well, I got a comment from, uh, and this is not the first one from Oppenheimer Ranch Project. I don't know what the hell is wrong with people. This was under the video that I posted last night, Dorian Correction, re Nassau. And he leaves this comment, Nassau is south of this storm. The storm did not hit Nassau. It hit Marsh Harbor and Freeport, you fraud. The last comment I got from Oppenheimer, I don't know, is a while ago on, you know, uh, uh, weather even. Well, when you have people who are focused on one thing, he, I guess, grand solar minimum, or you got this woman who really does need a new pair of glasses, the MCO plasma, the technology, apparently all of this technology, it's bullshit and they're just lying to us and we're stupid, we're idiots. Um, and I'm a fraud, according to Oppenheimer. You know, this gets us nowhere, gets us nowhere. But on, on the correction, what I'm saying, okay, um, Nassau is south of the hurricane and I made a mistake. Did, does anybody listen anymore? All right, um, if you're not factoring in all of what is taking place and you're just focused on one thing, then I have to wonder about you. You got an agenda and you know, is the agenda, you know, it's a safe agenda for you or possibly working for the other side? Who the hell knows? I don't know. But it seems odd to me. You know, then you have the global warming climate change people who refuse to do any research to find out that they're being lied to. And these weather events are not coming from global warming. It's coming from the manipulation modification of weather by man, bringing about these massive events, but you can't get people to think beyond what they already think. So we're in trouble. All of these people affect our reality, our reality. Because we have to watch this destruction over and over again. And many who have watched it, then they get to experience it. I don't like that. It really upsets me. You know, people leave comments about how people are dying in the Bahamas. But where was all of the concern about all of the people who have died from the flash flooding events, from uh, the supposed tornadoes and the microbursts or the trees falling and killing people in their cars or, you know, this woman who just recently died in a flash flood while everyone was focused on Hurricane Dorian and concerned about all of the people in the Bahamas. And I'm not saying that concern was not legitimate. Of course it is. But I do want to point out this has been going on for a very, very long time. The legacy, the legacy left, left behind, behind by a Portsmouth, Portsmouth woman who died, who died trapped, trapped inside, inside her car, car during a flash flood. flood. KWA's Lauren Craighall is in Fort Smith, Smith at the church. church. Debbie, Debbie Stevens taught Bruce Black for more, than, for more than, than a decade. She tells us how Stevens' friends are coming together to keep her memory alive. alive. Debbie Stevens spent every Sunday here at Eastside Baptist Church. Her friends in Fort Smith say she worked with kids and she treated them as if they were her own. I miss her. I miss her terribly. 
and this is how place just seems so lost without her and with the kids. 47 year old Deborah Stevens drowned last weekend after swift waters washed her car off the roadway. She was out delivering newspapers. Stevens' horrific 911 call, making national news, has her friends and family trying to remember her as the woman who always went above and beyond. She was always here early, always the first one here, and a lot of times she beat me here. <laughs> All right, here's the full recording of that dispatcher talking to her. Come on, it's 22 minutes. And she drowned. And this dispatcher was saying things that, I mean, the woman was so terrified. You listen to her, the water is up to her chest and she's sitting in the car and can't get out and no one's coming. How many have died in all of the events that have been taking place? How many have lost their homes? We have more in the Bahamas losing their homes. I saw one person died. Now, we can see, you know, webcams like this. And then, well, with the technology that they have, the scalar technology, they can bring about precise targeting. Precise targeting of destruction. So you could see destruction in half an island in, in the uh, Bahamas, and the other half is fine. I don't know, I'm just throwing that out, because I do know that the <laughs> targeting yeah, well, weather modification playlist on my channel. But you can't even get people to view the videos. You do all the work for them, and they won't look into it. So these wars are going to continue, and I suppose all of the fighting between, you know, one another is going to continue. And yeah, I, I would love to see something change. Anyway, I hope that you circulate in Truth by Grace's video and Mike Morales. all the evidence and you still get people that just refuse to even take it in and consider it.